Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to The Sound of Drop Falling to Poison. Yet again, we we'll keep going. <laughs> uh, with more explore, exploration of this messed up aquarium. Well, the messed up side as well as the normal side. So, um, just as we've we've said, we want to keep going with this game, even though we've covered the story once and got one of the good ends, we want to get the rest of the ends, um, which are on the Steam version. Um, I should point out, I don't know if they were on originally all these endings but anyway it does um so we're, we're looking to get those and all those endings anyway we've still got about four bad ends to find and we've also got the three good ends true other true ends to find so uh, in the last episode uh, we actually triggered an event uh, which can lead you towards the three other true ends um, apparently uh, you could have got two possible true ends, one of them was the one we got, the Princess of Drops, but there's also another one we could have got originally, um, which then unlocks the, la the events that happened in the last episode, which was, we got a bit of a backstory about Sayo, uh, the feels about Sayo, jeez, she did not, she has not had a good life at all, really, um, like her, well her dad died and then her mum um, well, I think a mom, yeah, a mom and her family died in a car accident, but they didn't really look after her too well. Didn't really care about her that much, by this, if I remember correctly. But she came from a rich family, so they helped her out with money and stuff, and then she got inheritance. But um, that aside, it was kind of a backstory. It was uh, kind of a prelude to everything that's happened because it happens before Sayo and, of course, before Mayumi and Hameno head into Manton Aquarium because it's further into the past. So we learned that uh, Sayo was looking to uh, find a person who used to work at Manton Aquarium at a local nightclub. And that's why we came across a new character, uh, Miku Minato, um, who uh, we didn't really learn if she was a former employee of uh, Manton Aquarium, but we learned that the same day when she met what was Sayo in the bar, uh, she had been to Manton Aquarium. Um, and so they were just talking about um, well, life in general, because apparently they both go to the same school, even though they don't really know each other that well. Miku just wants Sayo to be a friend, but as we know, Sayo is a bit of a sundere and doesn't want any friends. She's just determined to find out the mysteries about her father's death and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so they were in different classes, but they're in the same year, even though Miku is apparently looking younger than Sayo. But we learned that Miku had been to Manton Aquarium that same day when they met up, and they were talking about the deep sea fish booth that was closed off from the past but Miku had apparently managed to get herself inside it while she was visiting alone uh, which piqued Sayo's interest and so uh, they went so they, they talked a bit more they had a, um, a couple of non-alcoholic drinks because they're minors and uh, listened to some music they talked about music in bands but Sayo wasn't really interested uh, what was the band they were interested in it was like Strawberry Silk or something like that but anyway they went back to Manton Aquarium in one of the evenings um, but they, they couldn't get into they couldn't find the deep sea fish booth aquarium as Miku had before she wasn't accused of lying but we obviously we know that it was because Miku had gone to the malicious Manton Aquarium before but she couldn't get back there with Sayo, and Sayo hadn't yet been to the Malicious Manton Aquarium. Um, it then moved on a few days, several days later, uh, where Sayo was tasked with taking homework and assignments to Miku, because Miku was sick off school, and that gave me immediately bad vibes, guys. I thought, yeah, this is it, this is the malicious phenomenon happening, even outside Manton Aquarium, that we've seen in some of the bad ends. Uh, it's now coming after Miku and kind of my fears were kind of confirmed thoughts were kind of confirmed when uh, it appears that Miku apparently attempted to commit suicide by jumping off her the jumping off the roof of her building or her, rather her apartments on the top floor so she jumped from there she fell landed in a tree hurt herself pretty badly and um, it's been put down as an attempted suicide but apparently she's not dead yet but it doesn't look good for Miku, um, especially when this place seems cursed. So, uh, so we learned at that point, um, Sayo was obviously going back to Manton Aquarium alone, and that just ties in with the main story with Mayumi and Hameno in the present. Um, but Miku 
we didn't hear much else after that we just heard that she was in a pretty bad way but she was still in hospital so she was still alive so it makes me wonder will we hear about Miku uh, again who knows but um, what we what happened at the end of the episode is it came back to the main story with Mayumi and Himeno back in their class so what we what I've done now is um, based on what I've because um, I had to seek a bit of help guys because we want to see all the ends but I looked um, on online like steam community page just to see how what how, what you're meant to do to get the other ends because we want to see them um, so it appears that after seeing that event it triggers the op the options to get the other CGs and other scenes and other bad ends and true ends um, and apparently Cho some choices may change or maybe choices that are there before if you make them again it may trigger something different based on previous events being different so what I've done is I've skipped a little ahead from where we were um, and where we'll see on the screen is that we're at the point when Kenji was starting to go a little bit insane uh, with him suddenly starting to attack Mayumi and with the crazed eyes and stuff like that. So, um, what we've, what has been thought of apparently is that there may things may change at this point from what uh, has been read. But I don't really know much else after this point. So, apparently, if we do something here, then something may change. So, what we're going to do is so we don't want to force so we're going to get back into it of course <laughs> guys sorry but let's get back into it but we don't want to kick out frantically because this time cause i don't think although that's the route to escape from insane kenji as we know shake off his right hand that's clearly not going to work because he's too strong so i think what we should try again is to call out frantically so hiyoshi san what's wrong please come back even after what he's done to me, I still resist using violence against Hiyoshi-san. Of course, I take into account that my strength would be no match for his, so that's why you don't want to choose um, shake his hands off, because Mayumi's doesn't have the strength to match. More than anything, he had saved me at the jellyfish booth. The one who saved my life. My only thought is that I have to save him. And yeah, didn't, uh, there wasn't really much hope in saving him last time. Don't know if anything's different, but let's let's find out anyway. Gah! Hiyoshi-san, calm down. It's all right. It's all right. You all, you all. Uh, uh, he's caused a bit of an injury. Ouch! So he may have caused a slightly bleeding injury there, but nothing to threaten her life yet. Ignoring my attempt to calm him, his large arm tenses, shooting out towards my leg. Okay. So again, it gives us uh, more options, or pretty much the same options. Uh, but I think we need to be adamant to try and stop him. Yoshi-san! Even so, I want to save him. And as before, it is more crazed look has kind of softened a little. But he's still got those eyes. This isn't something that comes from some sense of duty or ethics. Just for myself, I want to save him. You all, after all, you won't even. As he scales my body, I somehow keep him from grabbing both legs. Thanks to the fact that he is distracted, I am somehow able to get through the moment without being grabbed. You won't even. Yoshi-san, what exactly do you... Uh-oh, he's back again to super crazy mood. You all won't look at me. His words get caught up, caught up in my chest. You won't look at me. This thought seems to have been etched into his deranged mind. However, denial comes first in my mind before any question. That's not true, because if I weren't look at you, I wouldn't be thinking that I want to help you now, would I? You were... Yoshi-san! Yoshi! Aha! <laughs> right guys, okay, so we've now come to a new point, uh, which was from the from the information that I got, uh, is what is meant to happen at this point. There is meant to be a new choice to make here. 
And if I remember correctly, the last time we had this option come up, there was only two choices, which was Shinji and Kanji, which are not obviously his names, his name. But now there's a middle option for Kenji's actual name. So I call his name. No, it isn't enough. So I think if we click Kenji, something else might happen. Kenji-san! Having been called by his name, the hand reaching toward me slowly lowers. Oh, and the music stopped. Though the hand clutching my leg does not loosen, it is correct to say that he has stopped. Kenji-san, it's alright now. I'm looking right at you. Uh. Oh my God! I th I think he we've I think we've rescued him out of his mental uh, insane state. For some time, this serene period continues to permeate my entire being. Unable to relieve the tension, I stare at the suspended Hiyoshi san Uh oh. Is that so, big sister? Mari's voice playing in her head again. Suddenly, the voice passes through my brain, piercing the silence. Then, it just as suddenly cuts off. What? Oh, yes! We rescued Kenji from his um, deranged state. Uh, that you, Mayu-chan? Kenji-san, huh? Just now, for a second. Mari's voice, I started to say then shut my mouth. I get the feeling that her voice has reverberated down this passageway, but Mari is nowhere in sight. Maybe it's just an auditory hallucination like the one from when we came in. A refreshed expression appears on Hiyoshi-san's face, as if a demon has been expelled from his body. Uh, Mayu-chan, I... what on earth? You don't remember anything? How convenient. Don't... Remember? Remember what? Nothing. You just acted funny for a bit. Relieved that his voice has returned to normal, I tell him what happened over the last several minutes. Oh, he's gonna feel bad. Of course, I take the edge off of some of the frightening things Yoshi San had blurred out. Okay, so didn't go into graphic detail about what you did. Uh, we know what he did in other ends. It isn't that I don't feel, still feel wary about him, but at any rate, what had happened wasn't the norm. I come to an agreement with myself that the version of him I had saved is a separate person. What are you saying? Anyway, sorry wouldn't be enough, Mayu-chan. I've hurt you, haven't I? Well, um... I'm sorry. I really am. So sorry. All I can do now is apologize. No, that's not... Hmm? Uh-oh, something has piqued Kenji's attention. Could you... Let go of my leg? Oh god, he's still holding the leg! Huh? Oh, ha ha, sorry, I completely forgot. Arching his eyebrows upward, Hiyoshi-san releases my leg. He probably stayed unaware of it because of concentrating on what I was telling him he had done. I had thought him a light-hearted person, but he is definitely earnestly taking in what he had done. So he, he, has he has feelings, he feels bad, he feels guilty. Watching him as he bites down on his bottom lip so hard it bleeds, I decide to believe in his honest nature. Well, at least he isn't biting anything else, guys, from <laughs> what we've previously seen. I take a breath and rise to my feet, calling out to him as he remains with his head down. Oh, stood up, I guess. Are you all right now? My body still feels stiff. Do you think you can stand? Somehow, yeah. Oof. Resting his hands on his knees, he pulls his large body up. Yeah, I keep—I I kind of forgot Kenji's like a total muscle tank, apparently. Oh, a voice. Oh, huh? Again? Gah! A girl's voice echoes in my mind, a voice that whispered to me here in this aquarium, my little sister's voice. Almost in time with my frustration, Hiyoshi-san grimaces once again. Crap, my head. Hiyoshi-san! I have no time to worry about Mari. Having stood up almost halfway, 
Hiyoshi-san crumples as if his strings had been cut, tumbling to the floor of the passageway. I rush over to him, grabbing him by the shoulders instinctively. Don't worry. Huh? It's not unthinkable that I might revert to the way I was earlier, right? If I do, leave me. Go on. But, but... You don't need to worry. I'll be fine. Crawling across the floor, Hiyoshi-san rests himself against the wall. Gripping his head with one large hand, he turns to me with a pained expression. He is sweating profusely and struggling for air, taking deep breaths. Despite the state he is in, the corners of his mouth twitch up with a ha-ha. Aren't you going to look for your friend? I'll follow you later on, so just go. But, but, go! His bellow drowns out even my own breathing, reverberating down the passageway. For some time after he closes his mouth, the air seems to quiver. However, I do not find him or his sudden outburst frightening. That's good. Hiyoshi-san. It hurts that I caused you pain, Mayu-chan. You don't need to worry. If I rest a bit, I'll be fine, so... I understand. Are you sure? On my own, it's been nothing but frightening experiences. As he closes his eyes, he gives me a thumbs up. His haggard breathing continues as he deals with his own impending madness. He's trying to tough it out so that he doesn't hurt me again, creating puddles of sweat on the floor. He is seriously worried about me. So that's nice. He, in, in real reality, he does care. Therefore, I also need to seriously trust in him. No matter how many times I want to look back, I fight off the impulse and, at a quick pace I'm not used to, I put the passageway behind me. Okay guys, so there's a little bit of a difference in how the story's gone. We've actually saved Kenji from his madness, for the time being at least. Whether it comes back or not, I guess we'll have to keep going to find out. So, as soon as the door is between us, I put my ear against it and listen to the sounds in the passageway I just left. However, it is only my own violent pulse and not Hiyoshi-san's breathing that I can hear. He was in a strange state. My mother had w once had a high fever, but Hiyoshi-san seemed like he was suffering even more than that. In spite of the circumstances, he had pushed me to go. Since I was worried about Hameno, he was giving my situation priority. I'll come back, no matter what. I muttered to no one in particular. That's right, this is... guys um come back to this choice here which is a blue choice so again ultimately it, well one of these choices actually when kenji was insane uh and it resulted resulted in a bad end with kenji still eating us by cannibalism but which was the go back the way i came option which was leading us back to the staff passage where we found kenji but however this time we've we've saved Kenji, at least for the time being, from his insanity. So I'm wondering if something different will happen if we choose to go back the way we came this time. So, uh, probably, whoops, sorry, that was the wrong option. So, best thing to do, I'll quickly make a save. And we shall go back the way we came this time and see if anything changes. Moreover, I am concerned about Hiyoshi san's condition. Just before I came to the stage, his sanity had returned. Walking across the center of the stage, I head for the door that connects to the passage. Okay, so it's still the same scene where we got the bad end, but we'll see what happens. I open the door cautiously, peering in through the crack. With no hint of a person in the darkness, I open the door all the way. Huh? No one's here. Yeah, this this is different, guys. This is definitely different, so I wonder if this changes something. There are no signs of human life, just the sound of machine engines going whirr, whirr, echoing. The grey tone of the walls contrasted with the pale glow of the fluorescent lights is eerie. At a bit of a loss, I decide to head back to the stage. Oh, okay. Uh, it turns out that choice didn't really... It didn't really uh, affect the story at this point, but at least we got a little bit of extra f um, 
information there. Uh, we saw a little bit extra that was different. So, um, Kenji's obviously moved on uh, this time, um, assuming he's still alright. So, I don't know, maybe we'll see him again. Even though he can move, he didn't come to the stage for some reason. I can think of several reasons, like that his physical condition deteriorated or that he had gone crazy. In the end, the fact that he decided not to join me remains the same. Yoshi-san. He had urged me to keep going. Not being able to see him has me worried, but I will keep moving. Okay, so I guess that automatically means that we take the uh, down the underground passageway. Ah, now then. Okay. So we're back now with the choice where we're on the other side of the Mantan Aquarium tank. We've come back to the point where uh, Mayumi is trapped, kind of, she's gone through one of the staff passageways that's kind of uh, opaquely blocked on one side. It's like uh, one way through glass that you can see so the staff members wouldn't be seen crossing the passageways uh, by customers. Um, they would only see the fish in the exhibits. Um, but what we've seen is that Mayumi's on one side and then she's seen Saigonuma Reiko being confronted by Sayo in the, uh, on the other side but there doesn't appear to be an easy way for Mayumi to get over there to help Sayo stop this situation. So uh, we come back to this choice of observe the situation or stop her. Uh, last time we did this um, Either way didn't make a difference, it still resulted in Sayo's death by the hands of Saginuma Reiko. Oh, I hate this woman. Uh, that grin and that those eyes that creep me out. Uh, so this choice didn't really matter uh, last time. And I'm pretty sure it's probably not going to matter again. But we should do what would I would think is right. We should try and stop them. Stop, well, stop Sire from doing something bad and stop Reiko from doing the worst. Because we definitely know what Reiko is planning. So I attempt to leave my safe place, but I cannot find a break in the wall. There should be a door somewhere. Even as I think this, I cannot find a doorknob in the darkness. As I keep my eyes on the both of them, I decide to search the area connected to the Fish of the World booth. Their quarrel continues, the girl using hand gestures to get Sakunuma-san's attention. And yep, there's those serious eyes of Reiko, of, of Sayo. Uh, and just that cheeky wee grin, that evil grin from Reiko. In contrast, she merely looks down on the girl. From my perspective as an outsider, it doesn't look like she's even paying attention. What could have happened? What in the world could have happened to bring them to such a climax? Though I have many questions, it's unlikely that I'll get any answers. And now Sayo's backing up over something. A sad expression appears on the girl's face for a moment, then she looks away from Saginuma-san. And this is when Reiko pounces with her evil intent. At almost the same time, the composure leaves Saginuma-san's face. She creases her brow and opens her eyes wide. Her nose is twitching. Something has touched a nerve, getting her attention. Even without sound, that much is clear to me. Oh, okay, looks like we're just gonna get the same uh, scenario. Huh? Wait! Ugh. Without thinking about it, I pound on the wall. However, this doesn't cause so much as a ripple, leaving me cut off from the two of them. This time, Saginuma-san hits the girl. Then she immediately grabs the nape of the girl's neck and throws her into the wall of the tank. There is no sign of the impact. <sighs> I didn't really want to see this CG again, but... Uh... No! Having hit the back of her head on the tank, the girl falters and Saginuma Sam flips her body over, grabbing the back of her collar. The girl's face is turned in my direction I realise that she's fainted. She's unconscious. A horrible premonition runs through me. I, that line doesn't sound familiar. With the girl's chest pressed against the wall of the tank, Saginuma San grabs the back of her head and smashes against the tank wall over and over again. Oh wait, actually I think it is. 
See Saganuma-san's face as it is bathed in light from behind and has become a silhouette. The only thing I can see is her lips, which dangle in the shape of an anchor. No, at this rate she'll die! Without thinking, I scream. I have to help her! But you can't! I can't stay quiet any longer. At any rate, I pound on the wall before me. Come on, come on, please, let it get through! However, no matter how many times I strike it, Saganuma-san does not look this way, as if the sound isn't going through. Since the sound from the other side isn't coming through, then the sound from my side shouldn't go through either. Yep. It figures, I have no choice but to go out there. I grope about, trying to find a crack in either side of the wall. From top to bottom, right to left, I go along the outer side of the tank and look to see if there's a way to get in from below. A handle of some sort would be great, or anything that could serve as a starting point. There's nothing. Nothing. I still can't find any way whatsoever to get to the other side. Panicking over what I should do, I frantically search for the door. Oh! Oh! Oh guys, there's new stuff! So because Kenji's out of his uh, insane state, he's actually conveniently here. Uh, Oh, he's, he's above Mayumi? Okay, so... Uh, above you, Mayu-chan. Huh? That voice? What breaks through my bewilderment is something reminiscent of a man's voice. Looking up, I breathe a sigh of relief at the words pacing through as I am lifted up in sync with the voice be bellowing, Let's go! This sensation is different from floating, more like that my body is being pushed up. I hear the voice from below say, Oof. Just now I'm about to hit the ceiling and I place my hands against it. There should be a handle above you. If you pull that, a ladder will come out. Oh yes, we're actually going to hopefully get in and save Sayo at this point. Ugh, right. I look down to give my reply and finally confirm the voice's owner. He's got a firm grip on the left and right side of my hips, raising me several meters in the air. It gives me the stable feeling of a father sitting a child on his shoulders, not letting me slip. Genji-san. Uh, oh, I thought I clicked there. Apparently I did not. It's fine. Just open the door. Alright. From there, you can pass through the passageway above and go to the other side of the tank. Oh yes, we can get over the other side. I got it. Right, you gonna stop you Reiko I hope if you don't hurry that girl will die right I slide my hands across the ceiling searching for any bumps or grooves I find something sooner than I expected and give a good pull on that bump with a clatter the ladder on the other side of the door swings down and I reach for it before it drops all the way I've got this all right I'll be there in a bit Inside the ceiling, there's a passageway I have to crouch down to walk through. To the left and right of me are machines with meters attached. Surely they regulate the booth below. After 10 meters, I have come far enough to have passed the barrier between myself and the two girls. Still bent over, I quickly move on and push open the door at my feet. Oh, come on, please make it in time. Please make it in time. Kick it in! The it Kenji-san is referring to is the metal grate serving as an exit. Twisting my body inside the narrow passageway, I kick downward with all my might as he told me to. With a loud clang, it falls to the ground inside the Fish of the World booth. Ah, so that got Reiko's attention. What? I can immediately see Saganuma Reiko shaken by the wire mesh that just fell. She takes a step back from the girl. I jump down, following the momentum of my kick. It's far from a clean landing, but at least I don't hurt my leg. As I straighten myself up, Kenji-san follows behind me. Oh, and it looks like Kenji's confronting Reiko. As she becomes aware of a third intruder, Saganuma Reiko takes several more steps, putting distance between us. Ignoring her, I rush to the girl's side. Yes, Sayo, you're alive. Are you okay? The girl is lying down with her eyes closed, having lost a great deal of blood. Those blank eyes I saw from the other side of the acrylic window are now shut. I place my hand on her chest, trying to find her pulse. I can hear it! Oh, thank God she's still alive. The sound itself seems to be very quiet. Still, 
Within her soft breast, the resonating vibration is definitely reaching the palm of my hand. <laughs> She's, she can talk. As if in response to my voice, I can hear the little girl... I hear the girl click her tongue in annoyance. She doesn't seem to have regained consciousness yet, but there is no mistake that she is showing her emotions. Uh, you didn't finish the job this time, Reiko. You. Even though I know she's alive now, I still can't lose focus. I listen carefully to the conversation Sakunuma, Reiko and Kenji-san hold as they stand facing each other. So these two definitely know each other, so that's confirmed that... Um, Kenji is definitely a staff member working within Manton East Building, but he clearly does work at Manton Aquarium Souvenir Shop at times. Why are you here? Why are you here? Their words cut each other off, leaving only silence between the two of them. So they definitely know each other and it sounds as if they don't like each other. Do you know each other? I think it's kind of obvious, Mayumi. Neither will answer my question. Oh! Oh, Kenji just beat her ass! Kenji-san shoves Saganuma Reiko away. With his thick arms and large body, it takes little effort for him to throw her into the wall. Oof! Because you're here! Uh-oh. Kenji, don't, don't, don't go into another episode. Don't, don't go mad again, please. Oh shit, there's blood. Before she can straighten herself up, he grabs her by the collar and thrusts her into the wall with a great deal of force. Oh crap, so now he, her face is being slammed against the tanks. Having slammed the back of her head against the wall, Saganuma Reiko begins to bleed, leaving traces of blood on the wall that look as if someone dipped a cloth in red paint and scrubbed the wall with it. My, what an image. This is quite different from how it was when Saganuma Reiko was trying to kill the girl. Genji-san! Please help me. Treat this girl for now. Yes, good idea, Mayumi. Tell, tell him to step away from Reiko. Don't go completely mad. Don't get angry. He'll, like, become the Hulk. He is most likely trying to protect us. Who knows when Saganuma Reiko, who sought to kill the girl without hesitation, will target me. Mm. Honestly, I am afraid of her. I have a terrible gut feeling about her. Yes, you. that gut feeling is right, Mayumi. Still... In this moment, Kenji-san seems to be acting completely out of rage. That is far more terrifying to me. Yeah, you're right, Mayu-chan. Kenji-san slowly straightens his hunched over body and turns back to me. Oh! Oh, a new CG, guys! Uh, so it's Reiko against the tank. She's not showing signs of any bleeding from her head or trauma. but uh, She's been hurt, obviously, but... What is happening with this? Is this the Red Mountain Aquarium affecting Reiko now? Gah! Applying pressure to her head, Saganuma Reiko crawls along the floor, moving away from us. She seems to be quite shaken. I suppose that's not unreasonable. There's no way I can sympathise with her, but at the same time, I don't want it to go any further. Yeah, get, go away, evil woman. And, but yeah, also, uh, Kenji's done enough, I think. What is that? Yeah, it's what is what is this red stuff doing? As I watch Saganuma Reiko retreat, I sense that bad feeling once more. I quickly recognize what it is. A red, no, an almost black drop of light leaks from Saganuma Reiko's body. It doesn't quite act like blood. Drops are leaking from the wound on the back of her head, as well as from the skin on her elbows and knees, worn away from crawling on the ground. Oh, right, so this stuff isn't going towards her, it's coming out of her. Oh. She's definitely been influenced by the Red Mountain Aquarium, then. But maybe this, the, the malicious intent is leaving her. The drop of ominous light hovers before being absorbed by the aquarium. Oh, but the aquarium's absorbing her hate. Shit. It's not good. I feel as if I'm looking at something I shouldn't be. And that something that shouldn't be happening is. But it's the fact that she appears to be laughing when she leaves the room that bothers me more than anything else. Alright, so we let her get away. Mm, I have a feeling that decision might come to haunt us later. I can't get distracted. Right now, I have to save this girl. 
giving the stop voice returns my focus. Even though I said we have to save her, I have no idea what to do at a time like this. At any rate, we have to stop the bleeding. Kenji-san takes a facial tissue from his pocket and wipes away some of the blood. He then gently lifts her head and applies pressure to the wound with the tissue. He is pressing hard on her forehead. As the blood begins to dry, the original colour is indistinguishable as it has become completely red. Mm. Okay. Oh, and there's another CG. Sayo's out cold, but she's alive. Yeah, she, she doesn't look so good, but at least they've cleaned up most of the blood. H having roughly wiped away some of the blood, he removes his outerwear that has blood on it. He folds the parka he removed in order to hide the blood and lays it on the ground like a pillow. His golden ring looks pretty with his black tank top. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's lost his jacket. There's nothing we can do but wait for now. Her wounds are pretty severe, but even with my own limited emergency treatment, it seems we made it in time, so I'm glad. Ah, oh, thank god. Yay! We might possibly get an ending where Sayo lives! Although that would mean she wouldn't know the truth, find out about her... She might not get the full truth about her father or get reunited with her father. Ah, oh, the different feels and emotions in these endings, guys, and the way the story can go. It appears one person will be happy, but then another person will be either dead or sad. Will she be okay? She took a really intense blow to the head, so she'll probably be in pain for a while. Her breathing is stabilized though, so she should be fine. That's good. Thank you so much, Kenji-san. And Mayumi's calling him Kenji. Upon hearing his words, a sigh of relief slips from my lips. Oh. Nice music again. It's no big deal. More importantly, Mayo-chan, you're calling me by my name now. And that will make, it, that'll make him happy. Oh. A new choice, guys. Uh, right, okay, well, gonna make a save. Because even though it's blue, it may influence the end we get at the end. Um, so, huh? Well, that's... But please think nothing of it. So that's a, it's a little bit sundere by Mayumi. Uh, well, kind of, maybe not. But um, so that's kind of suggesting a, don't don't go to thinking too deep into me calling you by your first name. Or uh, that's because I thought it best. So I don't know if there's a chance Kenji might go mad again uh, or not. Um. I'm not sure, to be honest, guys, which is the best decision to do here. Um, well, so this choice kind of leads it towards them at least staying friends. This choice may lead to a possible romance route. I don't know if there's, if there's a possible romance route in this game. It'd be a bit weird in a horror game, but uh, I don't know. Um, I think for now we'll be a little bit like... Nah, don't look. Don't think too much of it now, pal. But please think nothing of it. It might not even matter which choice we choose in this one. When he went crazy, I called him by name while he was out of it. I thought that Kenji-san would get through to him more than Hiyoshi-san would. But that change had been practically subconscious. That's why having it pointed out to me is so embarrassing. <laughs> Ah, Mayu-chan, it seems like we've gotten a bit closer. <laughs> Ever the flirt, Kenji. He's smiling at me as he says this. In order to hide my embarrassment, I puff up my cheeks and have no choice but to pretend to be mad. You're terrible, Hiyoshi-san. Oh no, don't, 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 don't go back to Hiyoshi-san. Hey, go back. I'll stop teasing you, so bring back that good mood. It's not like I'm really upset or anything, though. Oh god, now now that's Mayumi Sundare confirmed. Not only did he save me, he saved the girl, too. Yeah, Kenji's a hero. If this were a movie, he would unmistakably be in the position of the hero. Just as I'm thinking I want to hurry up and get off this topic already, it's Kenji-san who changes the subject. So, Mayu-chan, this may not be the best time, but who is this girl? Oh... 
Ah. Ah, so Sayo might introduce herself to these two earlier. Because at this point in the story, uh, yeah, Mayumi didn't know Sayo's name at this point. She only found out Sayo's name after she died in the, in the first playthrough. Kenji-san asks as he turns his face in the direction of the girl. I don't think Mayumi knows at this point. The girl's eyes are closed, but her soft breathing continues. Her long hair is tied back, and her clothes are more punk than they are high fashion. She looks like she would prefer a live music club over an aquarium. How ironic now that we know the full backstory. Her round eyes and soft outline somehow remind me of Mari's appearance. Actually, I don't know either. I met her after I came to this twisted version of Mantin Aquarium. I pause for a moment to remember exactly how I met her, then continue speaking. Despite the fact that it hasn't been more than half a day since our meeting, this girl and I have struggled for our lives together. She spoke pretty harshly to me when I saw Jimeno, whose body was under attack from parasites. After that, I saved her, and she saved me. Together, we researched the secrets of this Manton Aquarium, including the fact that the director here was the victim of a murder. So then, you two know about the incident. So Kenji's revealed he knows about the suspected murder of the director as well. Hmm. Ignoring Kenji's suggestive tone, I continue talking about the girl. She wasn't planning to be with me to the end. She steeled herself, saying, If I can learn the truth, then it's okay if I die, and resolved herself to end it on her own. Just as I thought that we had reached an understanding, I was wrong. Surely she felt she couldn't rely on me. If she hadn't called out to me, I wouldn't have risen up to save my best friend. Then this girl wanted to be by herself from the start. Correct, Genji. I hesitate for a moment, then nod. Mayu-chan, before you met up with me, you really experienced so much more than I could have imagined. You've come so very close to the truth. Your eyes have taken on such a strong colour. Wait a second, Kenji. You've come so very close to the truth. What do you know you're not telling us? So you did know something after all, Kenji-san. Uh-oh. His brows changed. He's getting a little angry. I didn't want to scare you all by saying more than necessary. However, it seems I don't have to sugarcoat things anymore. Please tell me about earlier. Your friend, Mayo-chan. What condition is Hameno-chan in right now? Jimeno's entire body is currently being invaded by parasites. According to what Saginuma Reiko said, that breed doesn't normally feed off of their host, but they seem to be attacking Jimeno. But this girl said that if I can get Jimeno and I out of Manton Aquarium, I might be able to save her because the threat of the parasite only persists while we're inside Manton Aquarium. That seems to be true. Yeah. I get it. This girl's pretty sharp. That story's half right, half wrong. Oh, then do fill us in on the half wrong bit, mate. Half? What do you mean by that? If you escape this mountain aquarium, the threat of the parasites will disappear, but the curse itself will remain. Little by little, the life energy will be drained from her body and she will weaken, and yes, we've had that confirmed in a previous bad end where Jimeno died from unknown causes in the hospital. Until she succumbs and dies. Curse? Dies? So I can't save Jimeno? Uh, she's very distressed. I couldn't stop my voice from getting louder. Kenji-san doesn't make an angry face, but he does answer in a stern tone. Well, he's he's, he's, he's he said he's not sugarcoating it. He's just giving you the, he's just get cutting straight to the point, being blunt, and trying not to sugarcoat it too much because it's a pretty serious situation. Calm down and let me finish. This is important. Got it? I understand. I hold back my overexcitement as I wait for Kenji-san to continue speaking. This aquarium is a different dimension, created from the grudge of the murdered director and the numerous fish culled and killed here. And he's, he's right, so... 
this just piques my interest as to how why how Kenji knows so much. Is he like Mari? Has he been dead for a few years or something? Mayu-chan, you probably remember hearing of it as a parallel world, but it's another world created from negative emotions. It's a world created within the framework of Mantan Aquarium. Grudges and energy from souls, those are occult terms, right? There is definitely some power at work we cannot see. Even now, science cannot prove exactly how our emotions are created, but the power from that is surely involved in the creation of this Mantan Aquarium. I've decided to call it the Red Mountain Aquarium. Wow, okay, so this is kind of Kenji giving us the same speech that the director did when we were in his office, so uh, it's kind of intertwining the stories, but we're taking a different path. You and I, Himeno and that girl there, all of us who have come here are cursed. More accurately, we were lured here by wandering ghosts. When the Red Mountain Aquarium was created, it wasn't by just the murdered fish, but the souls of everyone who died here. People who died here? Mm, and she'll be triggered because of Mari. In other words, I could have become one of them. Yep. And that's how a lot of the bad ends turned out. You became one with the Red Mountain Aquarium, joined the, the souls that have grudges. I have been in danger of it so many times, even now the possibility is still very real. If I hadn't made it to this point, I might not have believed Hiyoshi-san's story. To borrow his words, having reunited in the Red Mountain Aquarium, I could have seen it as a joke at first and lost my life without realising how serious things really were. Something is luring us here. It, it may only be one piece of a bigger grudge, but for now, Let's refer to them as vengeful spirits. In order to maintain their existence, they need energy. Here, within the Red Mountain Aquarium, they are constantly trying to supplement that energy. Makes sense. But what if we escape? They'll lose their energy supply. If that were to happen, then the life force of a living human, in other words, the soul, would become their energy. What remains in our bodies would only last about a month. For example, even if we were able to escape, it wouldn't just be Jimeno, but all of us who would die within a month? Yes, so if you leave now, if all of you leave now, like f like if you, you Kenji, uh, Sayo when she wakes up, and Jimeno leave, she may be cured of her parasites, Jimeno, but all of you will die within a month due to the curse. Interesting. But it's true, based on the bad endings that we did when we went through the gates. Um, kind of near the end and also kind of uh, just at the point where Mayumi was at the gate earlier. And it's not just that, is it? Whatever it is might contradict everything you've said, Kenji-san. Oh! Also, Mayumi is also expressing a bit of doubt. She doesn't completely believe everything Kenji's saying. Could you mean that before our life energy is gone, we have to come back to the Red Mountain Aquarium? So that's the things possessing us can take some more energy? Mayu-chan, you're clever. Kenji-san says this with admiration, but he doesn't sound the least bit happy. Anyway, you're right, Mayu-chan. You know when it is we need to return, right? The night of a full moon. The day of the full moon. So the, ru the rumor Hameno heard wasn't necessarily mistaken. On top of that, the cycle of the moon lasts for about 28 days. So by coming to the Red Mountain Aquarium on the day of a full moon, we won't be killed by the curse. Oh, interesting. Oh. Well, that's... I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. All right, so... So if they come on the day of a... A full moon, they won't be killed by the curse. Ah, that makes sense because that I'm uh, pretty sure Miko entered Mountain Aquarium on the day of a full moon, but she managed to leave. But it appears the curse caught up to her anyway. Oh, well, that's that's a bit eerie. Red, a blood moon. Okay, reminds me of Breath of the Wild a little bit. Uh, 
When there's a full or new moon, the Earth, Moon and the Sun are in conjunction in a straight line. At that time, the moon's pull is at its strongest. You've heard that this is when the ebb and flow of the tides is greatest, right? Yes! Moreover, there are legends that say the moon gives an illuminating energy to things which normally go unseen. Uh, I think that might be to do with deep sea fish. Whether this is to be believed, or the more scientifically sound idea of the moon's effect on magnetic pull, the point does stand that the path to the red man's aquarium is inaccessible on the day of a new moon. Alright, okay. So that must have been the night that Sayo and Miku tried to go back in? Possibly. What Hiyoshi-san is saying has plenty of guesswork to it, but it's enough to satisfy me. However, it's because of this satisfied feeling that more questions begin to rise. If we can reach the Red Mountain Aquarium on the day of a full moon, wouldn't more people have reached it as well? Yet that isn't the case, right? That is also a fantastic question and point there, Mayumi. You would expect more people to be trapped here, if that was the case. The difference is probably related to fate. People who are tied to Mountain Aquarium, or to the victims of the Red Mountain Aquarium, are lured in as if they are guided by the moon's strengthening pull. Ah, Kenji's good, good counterpoint. That's true. Mayumi's, Mayumi's here because of um, uh, Mari. Uh, Sayo's here because of her dead director father. Miku. I'm not sure why she was brought in here. Kenji's here because he's a wor he works there, or did work there. Um, not sure about Miku. Um, I think she just loves man, likes Manton Aquarium, so she's been there before. And Himeno, she just had a real, the ultimate urge or desire to kind of figure out the mystery. So maybe that's why she got trapped there. I'm connected to Mari. The girl is connected to the director, her father. Jimeno's connection is surely to someone pulled into the Red Mountain Aquarium. Me or Mayumi. That makes better sense. If I think back on it, everyone has their own ties to Mountain Aquarium. Yoshi-san also mentioned an old acquaintance he hadn't seen in some time. Oh yeah, Kenji's friend died here. Yoshi-san and who? I almost asked, but stop the words before they come out. Back when he went crazy, he said a girl's name. Maybe it's better for me not to know, and I get the feeling that I don't want to know either. He mentioned a couple of names when he went mad. Um, some, I don't know guys, somehow I get the feeling it's to do with Miku, but I don't know for certain. Um, maybe something about that will come out. Genji-san, how do you know all of this? Yes. Thank you, Mayumi. That is the question I have been wanting to know this whole time. My experience and my deductions. Also filling in gaps with the fragments of information you girls have given me, Mayu-chan. That doesn't answer her question. Kenji-san heaves a small sigh, then continues. Well, your guesses so far have been on point. Though I'm not just trying to maintain my life energy, but find a way to break the curse. That's why I've come back to the Red Mountain Aquarium over and over again. Oh, so he's alive, but he's been coming here and leaving for several times. Ah, uh, so this could mean he's been doing this for years and years, and that would make sense if he mentions names maybe that we don't know of. Hmm. Huh. This time, I had no luck either, but in order to have a next time, we'll need to get Himeno-chan and escape quickly from the Red Mountain Aquarium. And one more thing that you should know, Mayu-chan. You should know the truth of the murder that took place in Mountain Aquarium. The criminal who killed the director was Saganuma Reiko. And there we go. Huh? That girl. She's probably the director's daughter. Her primary motive was probably to learn the truth. It was most likely because she found the truth that Saganema Reiko tried to kill her. Yep, that makes total sense. Putting it like that, perhaps there could be no greater motive for her almost being killed. Erasing her from this world, the ultimate method of shutting her up. On top of that, killing her inside of the Red Mountain Aquarium would mean no one would see it and no evidence would be left. 
Is she... If she really is trying to kill that girl, that's completely unforgivable. Yes. My anger is greater than my shock. A human killing even one person is a sin that cannot be atoned for. Piling on other sins to conceal that first sin? Repeating such a cycle ensures such a person has no future. I turn to Kenji-san and speak with a firm tone. Compared to the cool way he told me all of these facts, I probably come off as angry. I am so sorry. I yelled even though you didn't do anything wrong, Kenji-san. After I say this, I realise that he probably purposely withheld any expression of emotion while he was telling me the facts. That's the difference between an adult and a child. Yeah, I keep forgetting Kenji's like 20 and these girls are in high school, so they're only like 15, 16 or something like that. Remembering the way Kenji-san looked when he shoved Reiko-san, I empathise with how enraged he must have been feeling. It's fine. From this point on, we'll have to be calm and make our decisions based on facts, so it's better to vent your anger now. Kenji-san says this with a stern expression. I understand right away that what he is saying is important, so I wait for him to continue. Okay, Sayo's still out cold. We should leave this girl here. Wait, what? What? Why? That's, that, that doesn't sound like a good idea to me, Kenji. That was not what I expected him to say. Huh? But that's... Even if you seem to have done what you could for her, her injuries still haven't healed. If we leave her, what will happen to her? Well, we went to all that trouble to rescue her. If that's how you feel, then why? Try to look at this from the other way around. At the very least, she's received first aid. I don't get it at all. If we saved her, then we should at least... There are two reasons. After hearing what you told me, would Himeno-chan really be able to walk on her own? Uh, good, good point. Yeah, not at the moment. Uh, with her parasite poisoning, uh, them eating away at her insides. Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, oh god, game, don't make me choose. Are you going to make me choose between taking Sayo or Himeno out of here? With your physique, it would be impossible for you to take Himeno along and escape. You would definitely run into danger. The only one who would be able to run or jump with a menu on their back is me. What if I had this girl ride piggyback on me? It's the same thing. Surely, for example, if we were chased by something, you wouldn't be able to run, Mayu-chan. He says all of this so curtly, I can't really argue with him. There's one more reason. Do you think this girl really wants to run away from the aquarium? Uh, again, Kenji hits the nail on the head. She doesn't. She doesn't want to leave this man to an aquarium. She wants to find... Well, find the, tr the truth about her father's death, which I think she's found the truth. But she said she was happy to die in order to find the truth. That's... Yeah, and he's, she's shocked by what Kenji's saying. Mayu-chan, how much do you know about her? She's okay with dying if it means she can ascertain the truth. That kind of resolve isn't forged in a day. Surely this girl has been searching a long time for the identity of her father's killer. She's finally found it. She might have been knocked down once, but I'm sure that she wants to face the killer once more. I don't know whether she wants some sort of remorse or some sort of public punishment, but having finally reached the truth, I doubt she wants to run away. If she really had decided to go it alone, she probably wouldn't have even accepted the first aid we did provide. In this girl's eyes, we've probably done more than enough. Kenji-san's tone of voice is steadily becoming more forceful. So, we finally reached the heart of the matter. It's time for you to make your decision. I won't force you. Do you want to continue? Yes. Then let's go together. We'll leave this girl here. Go back to where Himeno-chan is, and the three of us, myself, you, and Himeno-chan, will escape together. One month from now, the three of us will have to return here, but I've figured out how to get back in. I think it's a pretty reliable method. If the day of the full moon passes, in other words, when this day ends, the door to the real world won't open again until the next full moon. 
We don't know how much longer Hermeno-chan can last, so I think we should get out of here as quickly as possible. Damn. Kenji, I can't, you can't really argue his logic, but this is cold as fuck, dude. I mean, I think Sayo, Mayumi would be able to take Sayo on her back, to be honest. Um, and to be honest, if Kenji is so built like a tank, he should be able to carry both Hameno and Sayo out of here. But he does also have a point that I think Sayo does just want to find the truth. He has a point, but it's just so sad. So basically, there's no time to think it over. Kenji-san nods silently. After a brief pause, he continues. Don't think of it as abandoning her, but decide based on what is most important to you. Oh god, is this a choice? Am I going to get a choice here? In other words, two choices have been presented to me. Oh, jeez. Right. Just as Kenji-san says, I should decide based on what is precious to me. Well, uh, I will definitely be making a save here, guys, because I think this may be a choice. Which influences one end or another, to be honest. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure at this point. I think what we'll do is we'll call this episode here. A lot has happened. We've got a lot of new content, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of new content and a bit more, well, a bit more plot revealed about how much Kenji knows. Uh, we've also saved him from his insanity. Uh, he's alive at the moment, so that's good. We've at least got one more person alive up to this point. Well, technically two, actually, because Sire was dead by this point in the first playthrough. So we've kind of got everyone alive still at the moment, but... This this is going to be a tough decision to make. Um, so yeah, uh, we shall decide what Mayumi is going to choose in the next episode. Whether we go with Kenji-san and get Hameno out of here with them, or whether Mayumi decides to stay here with Sayo. But I don't know what that the consequences or or well what what that will cause. Um, don't know what the consequences of that decision will be. So. We might do both, or we might have to come back again and do a different playthrough to see what happens there. Um, I just have a feeling that one of these is going to trigger one one of the ends. This seems like a quite a significant decision. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a massive big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well to continue this story, as well as for more content to follow on the channel. Um, also, subscribing really helps me out to keep going. <laughs> um, also, anything you want to ask me or say or if any feedback on the videos, um, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, we'll find out what Mayumi decides next time and whether we get out of here or whether we continue further into the Red Mountain Aquarium. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!